Yes, the causes of aging. Uh, that I think this has to be one of the greatest questions of biomedical science at the moment. Uh, and it is really not known what it is. Um, so I can give you uh, um, some very broad history of, of ideas about the causes of aging and what's been going on in the aging field. Um, but this is very much a matter of my own perspective, I would say. I don't think there's a consensus about this. Um, but I think what I'm, neither, neither is what I'm going to say, you know, mad or anything. Over the years, I think there's been a kind of a dominant notion about aging, a kind of a general hypothesis about the nature of aging, uh, which has dominated thought about uh, biology of aging and, and guided experimental approaches and hypothesis generation and so on. And this is the idea that, um, that living organisms are complex systems um, and like other complex systems in the, in the non-living world, like machinery and so on, they wear out over time. Complex things wear out. And when you look at a, a, a person, uh, animals, when they uh, become senescent, it kind of looks like they've worn out. Um, and so um, with the uh, development of, um, of modern biochemistry and molecular biology, um, and the uh, uh, kind of um, tendency to look for ultimate answers at the, at the molecular level, uh, there arose this notion that, that maybe aging w was the result of a kind of wear and tear, the level of molecular processes, so molecular damage. And there are many different theories about molecular damage as a cause of aging, but, but they, most of them share this notion uh, that it's random damage, sort of random wear and tear of molecules. Um, so um, this led to a focus on what might be causing damage um, to accumulate over age and what's the nature of damage that accumulates with aging. Um, in terms of the latter, uh, evidence for the idea of aging as a damage accumulation process came quite early on because if you look at proteins, at DNA, at lipids, um, in lab animals or in humans as they get older, you see damage accumulating, you see DNA damage, protein oxidation and so on accumulates. Um, so um, for several decades, uh, one particular idea became very prominent, which was the idea that um, it's actually living in an oxidizing environment, which is a, a major driver of aging. Um, so the notion was that um, the body simply couldn't escape the accumulation of oxidative damage. So uh, th this would accumulate and then it would be the cause of the various diseases of aging. Uh, so um, this theory then was tested extensively over about 20 years, particularly in the 90s and then in the noughties. And during the 90s, I think towards the end of the 90s, there was a very strong uh, sort of confidence in the theory, and particularly in the notion that if you could manipulate the defences against oxidative damage uh, and against free radical damage, uh, you, could, uh, you could alter the ageing rate and you could actually protect against ageing. So, uh, and still up to now, if you go into health food shops, you'll find antioxidant supplements, you know, and you can buy sort of superoxide dismutase capsules and things like this uh, as treatments for aging. But what happened during the uh, noughties was um, uh, increasingly rigorous tests of this oxidative damage theory using these short-lived animal models. So using C. elegans, the worm, using Drosophila fruit flies, also in mice, uh, feeding them antioxidants in the diet or manipulating them genetically to enhance their, their intrinsic resistance to oxidative damage and to give them extra capacity to, to detoxify uh, oxidizing species in the, in the, in the, within the cell. Um, and the balance of that evidence from that research w uh, clearly came down against the theory. Uh, my own lab, we spent probably 10 years, not full time, but 
on and off 10 years testing and testing and testing this theory in C. elegans uh, using all sorts of different approaches and it's just not correct. So um, uh, I think that um, at the moment I, th I think in a way um, the nature of the state of the field is kind of strange. I think that there is still a lot of interest in the damage, the notion of damage as a primary cause, but I think partly because of the problems with this, uh, this uh, oxidative damage theory, um, there's almost been a flight away from, from theory, a flight away from the idea that you can identify primary causes. Uh, and a tendency to say, oh, well, you can never, you can't find a cause of aging. There are so many different things going on, and, and it's a bit naive, really, to, to say what is the cause of aging. Um, and I think there's something to that, but I think that it's also uh, um, too easy to do that. You know, it's, it's running away from the challenge. The challenge is to say, you know, can you define some fundamental causes of aging in, in, in some form? And I think you could argue that the question of, you know, what's the cause of aging, it's a little similar to the question, what's the cause of disease? So you could say that sort of disease not to do with aging, the normal diseases, you know, uh, that younger people get. Um, so you could say, well, that's a silly question. There is no cause of disease. Um, but um, I think that you, you can answer this question. You can say, well okay, what causes disease? There are many things, but there are certain classes of cause. You could say, well, there are a lot of diseases are caused by infectious pathogens. You have bacteria, viruses, macroparasites. Yeah. Uh, that's one type of cause of disease, and that links through to the germ theory of disease. And then you have hereditary diseases, genetic diseases that you inherit, congenital diseases of, of, of abnormal development. There are diseases that are caused by mechanical injury. You know, there are, there are a limited number of major categories of cause of disease, and that gives a, a general understanding of the nature of disease. Um, and I would argue that that's what we need for ageing. We need to be able to try, I mean, in a way, this is perhaps an aspiration, um, that we can identify some fundamental basic causes, and it's some sort of combination of those broad causes that gives an understanding of aging and that's what we lack at the moment. So there is a, um, a, a recent theory which I think in a way uh, provides something as, as an alternative or in addition to the idea of aging as a damage process, um, which is an idea that uh, has arisen over the last uh, decade or so. Um, and this is based in an, an old idea from uh, an evolutionary biologist, an American, called George Williams. Um, and it is an evolutionary genetic theory, which argues that, um, that aging is actually something which is very much controlled through your genome. It's not something so much that happens to you, it's something that your genes uh, enact and make happen. So it's coming from within, in a way. You may have uh, uh, genes which uh, produce beneficial effects when you're young, but the same gene through its action may cause pathology when you're older. Uh, and natural selection cares much more about what happens when you're young. Natural selection is, is essentially, or, or fitness, evolutionary fitness, um, is really a matter of being able to develop to reproductive maturity and have offspring and to reproduce successfully. After you've reproduced successfully, the force of natural selection is actually declining. You know? So uh, if you have a, a, a new gene, a new version of a gene that in, enhances your fitness when you're younger, enables you to have more offspring, but the same gene is having harmful effects much later in life, it may be that natural selection favours that, that new gene, even though it's causing ageing. So one of the things that was um, a limitation, if you like, of, of this, this theory, which is... Uh, sometimes called the antagonistic pleiotropy theory. So uh, that comes from the word pleiotropy, which is where a, a change in a gene is having multiple effects. So antagonistic pleiotropy means that it's having good and bad effects from the same change. But the good effects in the aging theory happen early and the bad effects later. So the, in a way, the problem with the antagonistic pleiotropy theory over the years was that 
it doesn't really tell you at the level of mechanism what's actually happening to the cell. It's kind of an abstract idea. Um, but then in the noughties, uh, one uh, particular uh, biologist called, guy called Misha Blagoskloy, he's actually a Russian guy working in the States, who, um, who came up with a way to reconcile a lot of recent discoveries in the biology of aging with antagonistic pleiotropy theory into a kind of a new theory, which uh, sometimes is called the hyperfunction theory. So what this theory argues is that, um, is that you can have antagonistic pleiotropy in genes affecting entire programs of uh, cellular differentiation and change. So these can be developmental programs, they can be reproductive programs, they could be programs of uh, tissue regeneration and wound healing and remodeling and so on. Um, and that actually run on of these programs or activation of these programs in later life is actually, it can explain a lot of uh, the pathologies that you see in later life. So this new theory uh, is a theory that we've been testing in, in my lab uh, and it's turned out to be very, very uh, powerful in terms of explaining the origins of disease, of aging related disease in C. elegans. So what this, uh, what this theory is really saying in terms of its broad meaning is that um, the cause of aging is actually your own genes. And it's not because the genes are defective. It's not because of a, a failure of gene function or mutations of, of normal genes. It's actually the, the good genes, the wild type genes, uh, which are actually generating uh, through their uh, continued action in later life, uh, late life pathologies. So this is very exciting. And I think this is not to say that this is a theory that explains the entire aging process, but I think uh, at the moment it, it looks to me from the studies of the worm that this is one of the major principles, if you like, which is uh, uh, explaining where aging related diseases are coming from. So I think this has been a, a really interesting development um, in, uh, in biogerontology in, in, recent, uh, in recent years.